this video, let's look at what is reasoning in large language models or what are reasoning large language models. I would be referring to this particular blog, Understanding Reasoning LLMs by Sebastian Rashka. If you are kind of the person who would prefer to read a blog rather than listen to a video, please skip the video. I would be putting the link of this blog in the description of the video. Go to this link and read for yourself. So let's try to understand what does reasoning in large language models mean or what reasoning large language models are. So earlier, your large language models were built in this fashion, where you had something called as a foundational model, which was built using pre-training on a lot of data, right? Then you had post-training or fine tuning where you wanted to be, you could create a classifier, you could create a personal assistant, right? Then more specialization started coming like you know, your foundational model was fine-tuned for web search, was fine-tuned for retrieval augmented generation, was fine-tuned for multi-model LLMs, was fine-tuned for agents. In this way, you had something called as reasoning models come up. Now, what is a reasoning model? Now, you can define it in different ways, right? Um, so, it could be a large language model which can actually reason on a complex query and provide you a kind of reasoning or steps on how it arrived to the answer, right? For example, if you have a factual answering question like what is the capital of France or what is the capital of USA, right? There is no reasoning over here. It just pulls from the memory and it can give Paris or Washington DC, right? But if there is a question like if a train is moving at 60 miles per hour and travels for three hours, how far does it go? Then there is some amount of calculation which needs to be done where you have to recognize the relationship between distance, speed and time before arriving at the answer. Now a non-reasoning LLM can directly give you an answer like this. The train travels at 180 miles. A reasoning uh, LLM will give you a response with intermediate reasoning steps. So it says to determine the distance travel, use this formula. Given that the speed is 60 miles per hour and the time is 3 hours, it does this calculation or it shows these intermediate reasoning steps and then gives you a response, right? So many LLMs which do not or which have not been developed specifically for reasoning tasks can also at times provide you these intermediate steps, okay? So reasoning models typically include intermediate steps that reveal part of the process, but non-reasoning LLMs also can you show you this intermediate steps as well, right? So most modern LLMs are capable for basic reasoning and can answer questions like this, right? If a train is traveling, but if there are more complex reasoning tasks, right? Which is like solving puzzles, riddles, mathematical proofs, that is where these reasoning models kind of excel. And when we refer to reasoning models, we typically mean LLMs that excel at more complex reasoning tasks, such as solving puzzles, riddles, and mathematical proofs. And the most LLMs which are currently branded as reasoning models, they have something called as a thought or thinking process which they include as part of their response. So how this LLM thinks is a separate discussion, but they can show you this thought or thinking process as part of their response. Now intermediate steps in reasoning models can appear in two ways. They may be explicitly included in the response. Okay or some of them, uh, some uh, reasoning LLMs such as OpenAI's O1 run multiple iterations with intermediate steps that are not shown to the user. Okay, the intermediate steps can be shown to the user. They may not be shown to the user as well. And it can happen via multiple intermediate steps and then it gives you an answer. So the next question comes is, when should we use a reasoning model? So do we even need a reasoning model? I had done a comparison of uh, Gemini Flash 2.5 with reasoning and without reasoning. And I found out that in many cases, uh, the model without reasoning gave similar responses. Okay. So it depends, right? Reasoning models are designed to be good at complex tasks such as solving puzzles, advanced math problems and challenging coding tasks. They may not be necessary for simple tasks like summarization, translation or knowledge based question answering. Reasoning models for everything. If you use reasoning models for everything, it can be inefficient and expensive. Reasoning models are typically more expensive to use, make use of more tokens, so more verbose and sometimes more prone to errors due to overthinking. So the rule over here is that use the right tool or type of LLM for the task. So this is the kind of summary of, you know, the strengths and limitations of reasoning models. 
Reasoning models are good at deductive or inductive reasoning. For example, you want to solve riddles, math proofs, where you have chain of thought reasoning, where you are breaking down a problem into multiple smaller problems, complex decision making tasks, better generalization to novel problems. It is bad at, it requires more inference time. Okay. Uh, it, there is possibility of overthinking for simple tasks. There is also for knowledge based tasks, the problem of hallucination. Okay, the recently released O3 from, um, you know, OpenAI, they claim that the hallucination is more now because it's a thinking model, right? Because it's a reasoning model. So this is actually the comparison between, you know, the strengths and weakness of reasoning models and when to use a reasoning model. What are the main ways to build and improve reasoning models? So the first one is inference time scaling. So one way to improve an LLM's reasoning capabilities is inference time scaling. It can have multiple meanings, but what it typically means is that it refers to increasing computational resources during inference to improve output quality. So a rough analogy is that humans tend to generate better responses when given more time to think through complex problems. Similarly, you can apply techniques that encourage the LLM to think more while generating an answer. So one of the straightforward approach is to inference timing is clever prompt engineering. So you can have a chain of thought prompting where you can include phrases like think step by step are included in the prompt. Okay, this encourages the model to generate intermediate reasoning steps rather than jumping directly to the final answer, which can lead to more accurate results to more complex problems. Okay, but for simpler question, it doesn't, it is not really required. Okay, but for complex questions, this can help. So here is a simple example, which shows the difference between regular prompting and chain of thought prompting for a mathematical problem where chain of thought prompting, um, you know, does the intermediate steps and gives the correct answer. So this can be considered as an inference time scaling because it makes inference more expensive through generating more output tokens. Another type of or approach of inference time scaling is the use of voting and search strategies. So one exa uh, simple example is majority voting where we can have the LLM generate multiple answers and then we select the correct answer by a majority vote. Similarly, you can use beam search and other search algorithms to generate better response. Okay. So, but you know, what happens over here with inference time scaling is you have to give more resources over here. You have to parallelly run in case of voting, you parallelly run multiple inferences for the same query. And then you take majority of, you know, the answer, which it says as the best one, right? Uh, beam searches again, you can have additional process based reward model at each token generation step to find the best answer. You can have some kind of a process based reward similar to beam search, but it also includes a rollback step, which is look ahead search. So you can have these ways of inference scaling as well. Okay. So if you look at deep seek R1, they made use of, uh, you know, process reward model and Monte Carlo tree search based approaches. Uh, they said these are unsuccessful. Okay. So they did not use uh, these techniques. That is what they're saying. Uh, the author says that this, he suspects OpenAI's O and O3 models use inference time scaling, which could explain why they are relatively expensive compared to models like GPT-40. Another approach to build reasoning models is pure reinforcement learning. So as shown in DeepSeq R1 paper, uh, they developed three types of R1 models. The first DeepSeq R10 was built on top of DeepSeq V3 base model, which was a standard pre-trained LLM. So unlike typical reinforcement learning pipelines where supervised fine tuning is applied before uh, reinforcement learning, DeepSeq RL0 was trained exclusively with reinforcement learning without an initial supervised fine tuning stage. So they took a base pre-trained LLM and trained it with pure reinforcement learning, which is what is shown over here. Um, so this particular reinforcement learning process is similar to the commonly used reinforcement learning with human feedback approach, which is typically applied to preference tune LLMs. So this is how ChatGPT was developed. Okay. The key difference is they skipped the supervised fine tuning stage for instruction tuning. So this is why they refer it to as pure reinforcement learning. So they used a rewards model for, uh, you know, uh, instead of a reward model trained on human preferences, which is your RLHF approach, they employ two types of rewards an accuracy reward and a format reward. The accuracy reward uses lead code compiler to verify coding answers and a deterministic system to evaluate mathematical responses. The format reward relies on an LLM judge to ensure responses follow the expected format, such as placing reasoning steps inside tags. So this approach was enough for LLM to develop basic reasoning skills. And then the researchers observed an aha moment where the model began generating reasoning traces as part of its responses, despite not being explicitly trained to do so as shown in this figure where it says, wait, there's an aha moment. I can flag here. Let's reevaluate step by step. 
Okay, so this was a key finding of DeepSeq R1 paper from their technical report, where DeepSeq team was, according to the author, the first to demonstrate that it is possible to develop a reasoning model using pure reinforcement learning. Okay, so this is the second approach. The next approach is you can combine supervised fine tuning and reinforcement learning. So which was the development of DeepSeq R1? So what they did over here was uh, it improves on DeepSeq R10 by incorporating additional supervised fine tuning and reinforcement learning to improve its performance. So this was the another approach. Okay, further details of this approach is given over here. So you can read this blog to understand more about this reinforcement learning plus supervised fine tuning. Okay, you can also do uh, reasoning. You can create reasoning models using just pure supervised fine tuning and distillation. Okay, so the three approaches which we have covered previously was inference time scaling, a technique that improves reasoning capabilities without training or otherwise modifying the underlying model through prompt engineering, through beam search, right, to through tree search and other things. Then you have pure reinforcement learning, where which showed that reasoning can emerge as a learned behavior without supervised fine tuning. Then you had supervised fine tuning plus RL, which led to DeepSeq R1, uh, DeepSeq's flagship reasoning model. So what else is left? You have model distillation. So DeepSeq released also similar smaller or also released smaller models trained by a process they call distillation. So in the context of LLMs, distillation does not necessarily follow the classical knowledge distillation approach used in deep learning where you have a bigger model and a smaller student model. Okay. Uh, so traditionally in knowledge distillation, a smaller student model is trained on both the logics of a larger teacher and a la target data set. But here distillation means instruction fine tuning smaller LLMs such as LAMA or say Quen models on a supervised fine tuning data set generated by larger LLMs. The, uh, so these larger LLMs are DeepSeq V3 and an intermediate checkpoint of DeepSeq R1. The supervised fine tuned data used in this distillation process is the same data set that was used to train DeepSeq R1. So here the idea is that the larger model gives you, you know, uh, supervised fine tuned data on with uh, chain of thought uh, thing and normal knowledge data, which is then uh, smaller models are then fine tuned on this particular, you know, supervised uh, fine tuned data set, which has chain of thought uh, data. So that's the idea over here. Okay. So this is another method by which you can actually create reasoning models. But here you need a supervised fine tuned data set coming from a larger model. So these are some of the ways of how you can build and improve reasoning models. So inference time scaling requires no additional training but increases inference costs. So making large scale deployment more expensive as the number of users or query volume grows. But it is the most simplest way for improving the performance of already strong models. Okay. Pure uh, reinforcement learning is interesting for research purposes, but I think more and more models are now coming up with this pure reinforcement learning plus supervised fine tuning approach. Okay. Uh, basically reinforcement learning plus supervised fine tuning. Distillation is an attractive approach if you want to create smaller efficient models. So it is not any innovation or something. Uh, it is just you are trying to create smaller fine tuned models. So you can use this distillation approach for creating smaller fine tuned, uh, more efficient reasoning models. Okay. So this was a primer of reasoning models, uh, which I wanted to cover. Uh, what is reasoning models? When you want to use reasoning models, you can look at this particular block to read more about the deep sea car one architecture, try to understand more about it. Okay. Uh, so this was a short video on what are reasoning models? How are reasoning models developed? Okay. What are the methods for developing uh, reasoning models? How do you fine tune a reasoning model? Hope this video is useful. See you in another video.